Hi, I'm the complaining cow and I've been one of Tesco's biggest critics over the last few years, including taking them to court and winning. People contact me through social media, sort of showing their concerns and interests about Tesco's. here today with the Tesco UK business CEO Matt Davis and the CEO of the whole business Dave Lewis. Well Dave, first of all, uh, can I ask you, um, I can see that Tesco, it looks like it's on the up, sales are on the up, things are improving. Can you keep up the improvement and what's next? What's on the horizon? Well, the good thing is, you know, we met two years ago and we talked about some of the challenges that business faced and I'm pleased to see that you've noticed a difference and other people have noticed a difference as well. So the feedback from customers and indeed colleagues is that indeed the business is on the up. So first thing is keep it going. You know, we need to be consistent. You know, Matt will tell you the hardest thing is making sure every day in every store the service is perfect. So we've got to make sure that we're consistent in that core offer. And there's a lot we can do in terms of differentiating, doing things that are unique. Brand guarantee was one, but there are other things that we would want to do as Tesco to, to help and add more value to customers. And I think, you know, I'm always guarded about what it'll actually be because that's competitively sensitive. But, you know, one of the things I'd like us to do is connect Tesco together a little better. So wherever it is you choose to engage, be it general merchandise, be it online, be it in store, that we bring that experience more together for customers so they experience one Tesco. Matt, uh, as a customer, I just want simple, low, consistent prices like a lot of customers do. And we don't want to see these confusing promotions, which I know you've done some to get rid of. You've got, sure. you've got rid of some of them in um, fruit and veg and stuff. But we're still seeing them in nappies and crisps and still, you know, in the, in the cheese. You know, what's better value, two small ones or one big one? What are you doing about that? So, Helen, I mean, what you said around um, what you're looking for in price, in terms of simple, uh, everyday prices, is what we hear loud and clearly from our customers. So, you know, our number one priority is delivering simple, stable um, sort of prices. Um, but at the same time, our customers tell us that they really value um, some of the promotions that we run, as long as they're in the right areas and the right sort of promotions. So, yes, it is all about simple stable prices and um, that customers can rely on time and time again but then it's also about overlaying those with some really powerful promotions and um, what i would add um, as well is when it comes to promotions think about brand guarantee because um, we have something unique in brand guarantee where we're saying to our customers really, really clearly, if you buy 10 or more items and you shop in one of our superstores, you don't need to worry about what brand's on promotion or not. You know, come to Tesco, we'll do the work for you, and we'll make sure that when you check out at the till, if for some reason there is a promotion on another supermarket that we're not matching, we adjust your bill there and then. Dave, you've received some criticism about the, the farm brands and are they misleading to customers? What are your thoughts and feelings about that? You're right in what you say, but actually what I'd reiterate is we developed, we created those brands with our customers. So with the creation of a brand which symbolises a certain level of quality and a certain level of value and then guarantees it every time they buy it, customers get that, they understood it, they developed them with us. Uh, and, and it's competitive and what happens in, in, in the food market anyway. You know, there are a number of brands within food that use naming uh, that are not literal in any way, shape or form, but have become cues of quality. A brand is a cue and a guarantee of a certain level of quality. That's what we see in the farm brands. The performance of the farm brands has been fantastic. Uh, customers' feedback to them has been that they appreciate the quality and the value. Sales have been great and we've had no real <coughs> You know, customer feedback that is anything other than positive for what it is we've done in creating those brands. But we've been very open about the fact that we're creating brands here. Matt, good service is uh, quite key for me and obviously I talk about it quite a lot. Um, and I've had my fair share of experiences with Tesco customer service. What are you doing to make sure Tesco keep on improving and provide good service? So look, at the very core of Tesco is our purpose, and our purpose is about serving Britain's shoppers a little better 
every day. We have across the business, across our stores, tens of thousands of the most amazing people. So what we're doing to support those people deliver the service that they aspire to deliver is to really encourage them to make sure that they can bring their personalities to work and serve people in the way that people want to be served. I've got some questions from other people, from other customers now. Okay, so Dave, Alison in, from London wants to know if you feel that people's perception of where Tesco stands in terms of quality and service is, is fair. So if you think of Waitrose being at the top and Aldi at the bottom, where Tesco is, if you think it's in the right place or where you would like to put it. I think what, what I would say to Alison's question is, I don't think the perception is fair. Um, and why do, I, why do I say that? You know, one of the things that we do is when we test our products, we test them versus our competition and we take off the brand names of all of them. And we just ask, it's called unbranded testing. So people taste and they compare without knowing where they come from, right? And we achieve a certain level of performance for the pure product delivery. What we notice and one of the things that, you know, we need to address and an opportunity for us as Tesco is actually the evaluation of the product and where it sits in the hierarchy is actually higher when it's not branded than when it's branded. And that tells me there's a perception gap between the reality of the product and what it is people think. And that's because we've we know we have some work to do in adding value to our brand. Right? Now, a lot has happened to the Tesco business over recent years, so some of that's understandable. But actually, if our brand was to be a fair reflection of the value that, and the quality that's in the product, then the perception would be higher. Right? But that's an opportunity for us as Tesco. Okay, thank you. When you next do testing, chocolates and Prosecco, I can do the, yeah, okay. I, yeah. Dave, yeah. do you believe that the adverts that Tesco are now running are helpful to customers or that they reinforce stereotypes? So the feedback from customers is that they are indeed helpful. So if you were to take the no quibbles guarantee, if you were to take uh, click and collect recent advertising or the scanners you shop, they feed back really clearly that they're helpful, they're relevant and that they add value to their experience of the brand. The fact that we use humour to try and bring those services alive is always polarising. Now I've been involved in advertising for quite a long time, getting advertising that everybody loves is, you know, you can do it sometimes but you don't do it all the time and particularly when you try with humour it tends to be more polarising. So. I, would I say that it's perfect? I don't think we'd say it's perfect. Will it evolve? Will the characters evolve? Yes, they will. Um, but there's an attempt to try and bring real value, helpful insights into our business in the advertising in a way that people can relate to through a family environment. So for us, it's about what messages do we put in which media in order to have the maximum impact. And in, in TV advertising, that use of humor in the way that we have tried with the family is working for us but it's a long term we'll build that campaign over time but against your question is it helpful i gave you some examples yes it is matt jill from cumbria wants to know why don't you just remove sugar from the breakfast cereals and we can just add it at the breakfast table like we used to in the good old days our customers on average are consuming about 20 percent less sugar since 2011. Billions of calories have been taken out of areas like soft drinks and um, you know, we're really continuing on that. So we've got some really, really clever people who are beavering away um, in our kitchens. Um, and we tried, some, we, we, we tried some of the products of the last week um, where you know, guaranteeing the same taste for customers, they're working with naturally occurring sweeteners um, and taking out um, huge chunks of sugar and billions of calories. One last question to you both. Gwyneth from Kent would like to know when was the last time you bought and wore FNF clothing? So I wore an FNF suit last week so I have FNF suits that are in my rotation as an Omat and most of the, the team do but the last thing I bought at FNF was actually a bikini and some active sportswear for my daughter before she left. So that was, that was a little over a week ago. 
So I'm delighted to be able to say that I am modeling uh, an F and F shirt uh, for you today. I should have. Uh, and F and F socks, and uh, I do have one other F and F piece on, but we won't go into that. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a regular uh, buyer uh, from F and F, as are um, our whole family. And not only am I um, proud to wear um, the product, but um, and loving the fact that I can spend a lot less and get great quality sort of gear like this. So yeah. Proud to be sporting FNF. When was the last time you bought something from FNF? <laughs> uh, uh, my son's school uniform, probably. Uh, good. Very good. <laughs> good. Good decision. Good, good. Well, uniforms have just been uh, launched in store uh, but for this, on that for this note, year. On that note of the children's um, uniform, children grow throughout the year, so you need to be putting them in your stores more often than just at the beginning of term because sometimes we need to buy uniform in mid-term just like wellies we still need them in the summer and, and yeah if you could do something about that that would be quite helpful leave it with thank us you. yeah <laughs> leave it with us Point thank you very much for your thank time. You. it's a pleasure it's a pleasure thank you, thank you.